Hi everybody, my name is Ehsan Yavari. I am a first year medical student in Canada and today I want to talk to you guys about how I managed to graduate with a 4.0 perfect GPA at the top of my class and how you too can study effectively to be able to get those high marks and to graduate with such a GPA as well. The timestamps for the different topics that I'll be talking about today are right here. And without further ado, let's just get into it. All right, so let's start with general tips. In general, before you even start studying, the first thing that you wanna do is pick a major and pick courses that you genuinely enjoy. This will lead you to be intrinsically motivated. That is, you're motivated to study because of the material, because you are interested in the material, not because it's a bird course or because you think it's easy or because you want a high GPA. At the end of the day, that's what will keep you motivated to study and eventually that's what will lead you to get those high marks. At the same time, you don't want to pick any professor for a specific course. Always and always, I stress this, you do not want to pick a course blindly. Talk to your peers, talk to others and make sure that the person teaching the course is fair and they actually test the material that is being taught in the course and they're not pulling information out of thin air. So Rate My Professor is a great resource for this. Using Facebook groups that uh, talk about different courses is great. And of course, speaking to up to your classmates and the likes will help you. So before you do anything, enjoy the course and make sure that the professor teaching the course is reliable and is good in general to help you along in getting those marks. So you've picked the best course, you're very interested, you pick the best professor, amazing, but how do you study? Before you even get studying, you need to make sure that you are in an environment that's productive to studying and you want to make sure that you can stay focused. So for the environment, you want to be somewhere where there are no distractions, no friends, um, this could be in Starbucks, this could be on campus, in a library, this could be anywhere that you will not be distracted, that you have personal experience not being distracted. At the same time, you want to put your phone on do not disturb mode, do not look at the Instagram, do not look at any notifications. And personally, on my laptop, uh, there are add-ons that you can put on Google Chrome that prevents you from browsing anything outside of basically stuff that's not productive to studying and you can uh, pick and choose what to allow. And during your studying time, that's perfect so you don't go off and browse, look at YouTube, look at any of that. So this is perfect. Using these tools, you can be in an environment that's not distracting. But during these COVID times, obviously, how can you be in an environment that's not distracting? Personally, what I did was put headphones in and listen to white noise or lo-fi hip hop or uh, noise canceling headphones on. And this will help you to stay on track. So just because you're in an environment that's not distracting doesn't mean you won't lose focus. For me personally, my mind was always wandering while I was trying to memorize anything or when I was trying to study. In fact, it looked kind of like this. Uh, so the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, uh, consists of the crystal and it has an outer membrane and uh, what else? Half a... Oh, that is a good book, yeah. Wait, uh, where was it? Oh, uh, right. Mitochondria. Yeah, man. And basically, uh, this would happen so many times during my studying session. And I fixed this by using a technique called the Pomodoro technique. So basically, in this technique, uh, what happens is that you dedicate 25 minutes to pure study. You just set your mind to it. You, you sit down and say, okay, 25 minutes. You set your timer and bam. You just go off and you study as much as you can. And then after those 25 minutes, you take a five minute break and do whatever you want. Generally, you do not want to be browsing or going on anything such as social media because you end up staying on these apps or stuff like this for more than five minutes. But you can walk around, 
talk to some people, uh, get something to eat. Obviously, not too much to eat. You don't want to be gaining weight while you're studying. I don't think anybody wants to be doing that. But get a snack. And so this repeats basically this technique. And after four cycles, so basically uh, four cycles of 25 minutes and five minute breaks, you end up where you study another 25 minutes, but then you have a much longer break. So you end up not burning out. So your brain is always recharged. And so you are productive. There is no point in sitting down five hours and only having one hour of productivity. You want to be sitting down for five hours and getting four hours of productivity. And that's what the Pomodoro technique will lead to. And of course, you always, always please reward yourself after your study session. This will train your body to get used to delayed gratification. So instead of taking huge breaks in the beginning before you study and just chilling and doing lots of other stuff, if you get used to the fact that you are rewarded afterwards, your body will get used to it, you will be happier, and you will be more productive in general and be able to study much more efficiently as a result. So now let's get into how I managed to study and how these studying techniques led me to get the four point. Okay, so now how do you study? The technique used is known as space repetition. It's the most efficient way to remember something and understand it at the same time. I'm gonna give you guys a real life example of how my typical week would be using this technique so we can flesh it out and understand what it entails. Basically, let's say on a Monday you had uh, your biology class, you had basic physiology, and you had anatomy class. Now, how would you go about actually uh, learning the material and reviewing the material? And let's start with the actual class. What do you do in class? How do you take notes? Whenever you're trying to take notes, what you want to do is usually the professor is teaching off a PowerPoint slide. That's most of the case. And what you want to do is you want to listen to your professor and put your full attention on them while also referring to the PowerPoint slide every now and then, just looking up to see if what they're saying is following the PowerPoint. And whatever is missing, keyword missing from the PowerPoint, you should be adding into your notes. Now, I have some friends who transcribe what the professor is saying in their notes, and I feel like for me that was pointless because notes add to what is already in the PowerPoint slides. You're trying to use the notes to explain what is in the slides, to explain the material. So when the professor is explaining something, not repeating something. So let's say he says that, let's go back to the mitochondria example. Let's say that the person, he or she, is talking about the mitochondria and they talk about its structure. So it involves the cristae, it involves the outer membrane, inner membrane, and it has the different proton pumps and they're just talking about structure, stuff that you already see on the slides. There is no explanation. These are things that you do not need to take notes off of. You should just listen and absorb the information that they're telling you. But let's say on the slide, that's all there is. You just have a picture of the mitochondria and he's just explaining, uh, he's just sorry, listing these structures. If he or she then goes on to talk about how the proton pump functions, this is where you start taking notes because it's missing from the PowerPoint slide. Or let's say it, it mentions, let's say the PowerPoint slide mentions the proton pump, um, but it doesn't really go in depth to the same degree that your professor does. Um, then you want to add it in. You want to add in information that will help you to understand what that proton pump does. So at the end of the day, your notes are there to help explain what's on the PowerPoint slides. So once you're done your lectures, now is a time where you go to your favorite studying place, the place that we just talked about. There's no distractions. You want to go here and you want to go over everything that was taught in each of your lectures. This is very key to study the same day that you learn the material. This will help you retain the information much better than studying the week after of something that you learned today or studying the day after. It's 
very key that you study the same day. And personally, I would open up the PowerPoint slides and memorize the facts of those slides. Whatever was on the slides, I would memorize it. Um, so you could memorize it by reading the material and repeating it to yourself. That's what I did. Uh, basically, you would just look at the slide, read the first point. So I would read the first point, look away, say it, and then look back, memorize the second point. So read the second point, look away, and try to repeat the information without looking back, and then repeat this for the third point, and etc. And then eventually you would repeat the whole slide to yourself in order to uh, make sure that you've memorized that slide. It's very key. You need to be actively studying. Now, some people, what they do is they do passive study. They read and reread and reread and reread that those facts on the PowerPoint slide. Unfortunately, this isn't going to cut it because, for example, let's say you're in a biochemistry course. Biochem is very heavy on facts. Minute details you need to memorize. Reading and rereading is very inefficient. And not only that, you're not actually actively memorizing so you won't be able to absorb that information well enough when testing comes for those minute details. Now for some people it does work. For me it did not work whatsoever so I needed to get up, walk around and read the information, look away and repeat it to myself. Now obviously you don't have to do this. There are other methods. You can also use flashcards. You can use sites such as Quizlet. There's also an app known as Anki. Anki is very good. It's a flashcard app. I'll just leave those two for now. If you need, uh, if you would like a longer video on Anki, for sure we'll get to it. And then the last memorizing technique that you could use is basically taking the PowerPoint slide, reading the facts, and then summarizing it in a paragraph or a story some other way. By summarizing the information, your brain is processing it and connecting details. And this way you can also try to memorize the information. So it's all up to personal preference, um, but you want to be making sure that you're doing active learning. So active learning means that you are um, testing yourself on the material. So when I'm reading something and then looking away and repeating it, that's me testing myself. Do I remember it? When you're rereading something and highlighting and just keep rereading, you're not actively learning because you are not testing yourself. Same with flashcards. These are active learning because you're making a flashcard that's testing you on the material once again. And summarizing it is of course testing your understanding of the material and the concepts there. So on that day, on that day that you've done the lectures, what you're doing then is you are memorizing and reviewing all of the material for that day. And for me, for each one hour lecture, it usually took one hour 30, to one, 30 minutes to one hour to also memorize and review the lectures. On that Monday, uh, maybe it would take you around one and a half to two extra hours to uh, finish reviewing that day's material. Then, the next day, let's say it's your Tuesday, what you would do is instead of now memorizing, because you already did that, you're going to only review the material. Now, reviewing basically works like this. You want to just flip through the material that you've memorized, so the PowerPoint slides, but this time refer to your notes, connect the pieces. You don't only want facts in your brain, you want to understand the concepts that are being taught. You want to get a whole picture of what's being taught. So use your notes, use what your professor has said and connect what the facts are to what the overall picture is. So just because you know that the mitochondria has proton pumps doesn't mean you know what the mitochondria does. And so your notes help you with that. So you know that the mitochondria is proton pumps and then what are they used for? And that's where you connect the pieces using your notes. So that's your second day. Reviewing is that portion of the second day. Then Wednesday, you have another lecture. You repeat the process that we talked about on Monday, but you're also once again reviewing the previous material using your notes. And you keep repeating this for the whole week. On the weekend, you just wanna quickly memorize everything once more that you learned for the whole week, then review your notes and connect everything for the whole week. 
and then you're done for the week. You're not going to touch that material again until you get to your midterm. So you do these blocks of weeks basically where you are reading the material, memorizing it, and then reviewing your notes in between. And when you do this, you're basically doing what we call space repetition. You're repeating information over time. And this helps you to retain the information to a much, much greater degree than studying one week or a couple of days or one night before the actual test. So as you consolidate the information in small chunks and as you take it in in small chunks, you actually end up absorbing the material very well and retaining it very well. Okay, so you've studied uh, each week like a chunk, so one chunk down, another chunk down, right? And then, so how do you study for the midterm then? You're doing all this passive, not passive, you're doing all this early studying, but how is it gonna help you on the midterm? Now, this is how it helps. Generally, you wanna have a minimum of three days before your midterm date, three to four days a week. It's up to you. Starting out, start with a week. Let's say a week before your midterm, what you do is, once again, you memorize everything that will be covered up to the midterm. Now this might sound daunting, but since you've done this space repetition, the memorization will not take you long whatsoever. It might take you half a day uh, at most, maybe a bit more if you're being efficient, right? Sorry, inefficient, but uh, half a day, and you'll be done the whole course, uh, not the whole course, but everything up to the midterm. And then you want to repeat this again or the second day, uh, the day after. Memorize it once more, make sure you got all the facts. And then the remaining days, it was inefficient to memorize anymore because with space repetition, you only need to repeat the information so often. And then so the remaining days, what I did was I looked at all of my notes and I, cut, and I basically used them to explain the material to myself. So you're not memorizing here. You're going through the slides, you're looking at your notes as well, and you're asking yourself broader questions, critical thinking questions, things that are out there, right? For example, once again, back to the mitochondria example, you would ask yourself, okay, what would happen if, for example, the proton pump stops working? So this isn't something that you've talked about in class, but you have the facts memorized, so you know what a proton pump does. And you also have notes from your professor explaining everything. So with these, you connect the material and then you answer these type of questions. And you're just trying to get your mind into that mindset of making sure that you understand everything now. Anything you don't understand, search it up, ask your professor, this is the perfect time to do it. And then when the midterm rolls around, you're good to go. You will be able to, uh, you will not only have all the facts memorized, so all the minute details that might come, you will get all of them right, but also any critical thinking questions, you will also get right. Because memorizing all these facts and studying your notes and connecting them go hand in hand, and you basically end up passively making connections yourself when memorizing that you wouldn't have um, if you weren't memorizing. And this is only something that you'll really see when you study. But uh, take my word for it for now. Um, but that's how I felt whenever I was memorizing the information. It all kind of clicks together at the end when you put everything together. Now, what do you do for an exam, for example? Uh, exams are big, they're covering the whole semester. Uh, how do you study for that? Basically, when you're done your midterm, you need to lightly review all the material that you study for the midterm as you go throughout the course. So you don't wanna throw it all out. Uh, obviously you might have a second midterm. You want to actively memorize for those, but in your downtime, spend 30 minutes just going through all your notes, going through all the PowerPoint slides, and you don't need to actively memorize anymore because uh, you've already done that, and just passively going through your PowerPoint slides should refresh that memory. But if you don't refresh your memory this way, come exam time, you uh, it'll be a bit harder to uh, rememorize everything. But if you keep refreshing your memory by just reading and uh, highlighting and understanding again, 
you're golden. So what you did for the first midterm, you're going to repeat for your second midterm or third midterm or however many midterms you have. But intersperse uh, the light brief view for the previous material as you're going through the course. And then now you spend, now you're going to study again two weeks instead of one week, two weeks before the exam date. You're going to go back and memorize everything again for the exam. You're going to go through all the material and actively memorize, whether it's through your flashcards, through the summarization, through my method, by just looking away. You want to do this two weeks beforehand. And once again, it will be quick and it will be fast because you've been slowly studying everything from the beginning. And it's the same, it, it, it's the concept is similar to the midterm. You're going to spend a set amount of time memorizing of those two weeks, and then you're just going to connect all of that information. That's it. And then, so let's say you spend one week memorizing, and then the remaining week you use your notes and you connect everything. And once again, everything will click. And if you don't understand anything, you can ask your professor at this point. But you will get the high marks as a result of this studying method. You will always get the high marks. Even So let's say you don't do any understanding. Let's say you just memorize the facts. You will still get an A for sure. There are courses though where it's pure understanding. And obviously it'll be tough in those instances. But we're talking about your general courses. You will get a high mark even without understanding the material. To summarize what this whole studying thing comprise, is comprised of, the first day, once you're done your lecture, you want to memorize the facts, the PowerPoint slides, and you don't really need to look at your notes in these instances. The next day, take those PowerPoint slides right, and connect them to the notes. So you're not memorizing here, you are looking at your notes and reading over your slides and making sure that you're understanding the broader concepts that are being taught to you. And your professor might have an intro slide that talks about the concepts that you need to know and you can test yourself based off of that. The next day you're going to have your next lecture, some, uh, usually, and here once again you're going to memorize these slides while at the same time reviewing your notes from the previous slides. For example, Monday's uh, slides. And then you're going to do this for the whole week. When the week is done, on the weekend, you're going to rememorize everything you did on that uh, specific course and do that for, for the whole week. Look at your notes, connect everything. And afterwards, you're going to only lightly review that week. From that point forward, so you're not going to really go uh, hard and memorize everything again. And so the next week, you're going to just repeat what you did, but at the same time, you're interspersing review reviews of the uh, previous week. And you're going to do this until one week before the midterm. And here, one week before the midterm, or three days before the midterm, you're going to rememorize everything up until the midterm, connect all your notes, and make sure you understand everything. And same goes for the exam. Once you're done your midterm, you want to keep re slightly reviewing all that material that was covered on the first midterm. But also for the second midterm, you want to see now actively memorizing. And so two weeks before your exam, your final exam, you want to uh, make sure that you uh, start re-memorizing everything uh, done in the course and then spending uh, the remaining time that you have left after you've memorized uh, to connect the concepts. And this method should get you the top marks. Now this was for science courses, but I do have some tips for uh, writing courses as well as math, general chemistry, and physics courses. Because those, uh, while these, these techniques are great, I think memorizing in any of those uh, topics or any of those courses is pointless. So we'll get to that uh, right now, actually. So what about writing courses, for example? For these, it would be beneficial to record uh, your professor in these instances, if it's allowed, and uh, try your best to 
write notes that really explain the reading or help you out. And when you're reviewing your notes, I would try to make sure that I was really understanding the reading or whatever it was that was covered in that course. And then when it gets to the actual writing, making the essays, the key to any essay is to get a very good thesis. You do not want to be writing anything before you have a good thesis. Thesis needs to be an argument. There's two sides to any story. If there isn't another side to the story, then it's not a good thesis. And no matter how good your paper is, the argument itself is weak. And so it will not end up being a good paper. Maximum uh, it'll, you, that you can possibly get is a B. So make sure you can argue for both sides. That it's controversial. So you want to make sure that it's a controversial opinion, not something that everyone would agree with. And then for writing courses, the key, the most important key is to always show your thesis to your TA or to your professor and get feedback. If they, and then always listen to their opinion. Your opinion doesn't matter. It's their opinion that matters at the end of the day. So that's writing courses. Understand the material, write a thesis that's controversial and Always get feedback from the professor and TA and keep revising what you're writing based off of what they say, not based off what you think. Now, for math courses or for physics or for general chemistry, any type of these courses that have lots of problems, once again, you want to make sure that you're understanding the concepts and you're spending less time memorizing here. You should not really be memorizing at all. So once again, that schedule that I was talking about, instead of memorizing the day that you've had the lecture, what you want to do is review your notes to make sure you've understood the concept. So let's say you understood the first law of thermodynamics, but then you want to do problems. Do the assigned problems. Do as many assigned problems or as many homework problems that you can find. This is your space, space repetition basically for these courses. Here you just want to keep doing problems and making sure that uh, you're understanding the problems that you are getting correct and incorrect. So what I mean by that is if the problem, so if this problem, you're having trouble with it, spend as much time as you need. Please do not look at the answers because you will not be able to learn if you look at the answers. If it takes you 10 hours, so be it. But when you finally solve it, you will never forget how to solve it. And whenever you have an issue with a problem, but then you do solve it, mark it down. So when exam time comes, once again, you're one week before your midterm, for example, you go through every single problem that you did and you do it from scratch to make sure that you've learned it. So instead of memorizing everything, one week before your midterm, you are redoing all your problems all your problem sets again, going over all the concepts. This is the key for these type of courses. Um, and yeah, so th those are the general tips for those uh, writing courses and physics, chemistry. Uh, with that, I think I've covered a lot. This is a long video, um, but I think the most important thing at the end of the day is you want to be uh, spreading out your study material. So you study a chunk every day and then review that chunk every week and then you review that whole chunk before your midterm and then you, re you review the whole course before your final exam. And if you do it in manageable pieces like this, you will be good to go and you will always get the marks that you need. But I think it's also very important to know how to memorize effectively and that's where active learning is key. So for your science courses, this is the key part, making sure you know how to memorize, making sure that you've got one technique down, whether it's using flashcards, whether it's through uh, reading something and looking away and testing it. At the same time, you can give the material to a friend and they can ask you the, the material, and ask you the minute details. And this way, you're also undergoing active learning. So with that, I hope you guys took something away out of this long video and uh, 
all these tips, all these things, at the end of the day, they helped me to get much higher marks than I originally had. So uh, at least hopefully one something from here will help you out, will help you get higher marks. And uh, I hope you will all be able to increase your marks after this video and achieve whatever it is that you are trying to achieve. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.